latest addition to New Zealand's air strength, four Canberra jet bombers end their 12,000 mile flight from Britain and come in at Ohakia Aerodrome. The first of a total of 13 and the latest of their kind, they'll eventually replace the vampire jets of number 14 squadron. After an absence of several weeks, the men have a cheerful reunion with wives and families. Later, the air crews are inspected by the Minister of Defence, Mr Connolly, who welcomes them home. Already stamped New Zealand, these Canberras will be a fine addition to a growing force. For 80 years, these birds were believed to be extinct. A few skeletons and skins could be seen in museums, but the Takahe, for that's what he's called, was considered as dead as the dodo. Last year, four of them flew up to Wellington, in an aeroplane, of course. They came from a hidden valley high above Lake Tiano, where a surviving Takahe colony was discovered in 1948. They've grown into full-sized birds on this Wairarapa farm, two males and two females, but they're not telling when they expect their new chicks. <coughs> Mr Gordon Williams, their personal biologist, checks on their progress with the farmer, an enthusiastic bird fancier. The wild Takahe live on snow grass mainly, but these birds thrive on baby food, grass, lettuce or even bananas. They're fairly closely related to the Pukeko, only their bodies are bigger, legs are shorter, and they have a much brighter plumage. These tame Takahe are much bigger and stronger than their brothers in the wilds, so if they start another colony, they may become as familiar to us as they were to the giant mowers of old. What is a solar heater? How is the force of wind measured? The answers to these and many other questions have been found by the 1,500 people who recently took the opportunity of visiting the Dominion Physical Laboratory at Gracefield Lower Hutt. A little bit of homemade lightning in the form of 33,000 volts. This display demonstrates a method of testing insulators. rather like a television set, the profile projector is capable of giving an enlarged picture 100 times normal size. Here a screw thread is being checked for faults. Precision and accuracy, important words at the laboratory which is responsible for setting standard weights and measures. This huge balance will detect the weight of a piece of confetti. A little machine with a big name, an anemometer. Used for measuring wind velocity, it's being tested here in a wind tunnel. The readings are shown on larger scales inside a nearby observation room. In another room, the heat is on, and under the concentrated flames of 16 burners, methods of joining and separating glass are demonstrated. Outside, the sun's rays are being put to practical use with these demonstration solar heaters, which provide a cheap method of heating a household water supply. Already in use in some homes, these heaters are proving economical and reliable. An outside indicator shows the temperature of the circulating water, and high standards of efficiency have already been reached. Heaters like this may well be widely used in the future. Back at the laboratory, the effects of concentrating the reflected heat of the sun is being shown. 
Similar reflectors overseas have been used commercially to melt iron and steel. So the work of the Dominion Physical Laboratories moves on, bringing the help of science to industry and agriculture and giving New Zealanders the benefits of progress. In 1895, traffic jams and fiberglass tops, power steering and radar cops weren't thought of, and some people wish it had stayed that way. These vintage car enthusiasts gather together every so often and regale one another with tall tales of fluid flywheels, push-button gears and disc brakes, all invented before World War I. Such cars become valuable antiques, and vintage car rallies attract everyone interested in preserving them. The days of the old Derricks, Daimlers and the Beyonds are not forgotten. When Sexton Blake drove down Whitehall and Bulldog Drummond chased spies to Dover, only the old fogies looked sideways. Devil may care elegance ruled the roads. These models have grown into polished old gentlemen. But some have become half demolished dented old cans, having a final fling at the rock and roll races. Old bomb throwing is the latest crazy motorsport. You buy an old bomb from the wreckers and wreck it yourself on this dirt track in Christchurch. Take your partners for the Chaff Cutters Charleston. It's crash helmets, not crinolines these days, and these bright young sparks need no retarding. You can't see the dirt for dust with these crazy mixed up skids. Like the 1920s, this stock car scramble ends with a big crash. An amateur stuntman takes a bow and another old heap goes to blazes.